And having said that, let me go to a question that I've always wanted to ask you. And I'm glad what I didn't ask you in private, I get to ask you now in front of all these lovers you have from South Africa. I'm gonna play, uh, I'm gonna play something. I want you to tell me what, what, just talk about it, whatever comes to mind after watching it. Yes, Mr. Sitepiti, Sarafina, that was in 1987. Oh my goodness me, 1987, Paul. Time flies, oh, Tenji, way. You know, oh God. No, oh, you just brought back good and bad memories. But I had so much fun. I had so, so much fun. And thank God for the opportunity. And thank God for Umbongeni, you know. Oh. Thank you. You just took me back. Oh, that, that was so beautiful. And you played an older woman. You were so young. I'm sure at that time you, you thought you were old. You were so young and you played an older woman. Thank you. I was so young. Né? And every time after the show, you know, you know, overseas especially, people will be waiting at uh, backstage door, wanting autographs, take to take pictures. And when they see me, Every night, they'd be like, oh my God, you're this young. And I'd be like, but we audience, it's TV and stage, it's two different things. But I don't know, for some strange reasons, or somehow I portray the part in a way that they would think I'm older. So when they see me, it would be always like, oh God, you are this young. They never believed, but they would only believe when they see me. And don't be found with problem because E. Shelley, I would always have these older people. Like, um, Baba. Students, not to mistress. If that was your first big acting gig and it took you overseas. The very first. And for me personally, I believe Uti and Castia Sarafina, you did the same, if not more, than people who went to exile, Baba Masosha and Makumi. Mm -hmm because you really, really, really were very vital in the fight for, for freedom and in educating the world what was happening in South Africa. Do you think South Africa accorded you guys, not just you, because especially you, your career is still booming, it's nice. Did they give you the respect that you think you deserved, especially with you and your, your, your fellow actors from Sarafin? You know, Tenji, I'm glad to put you touch on that one. Uh, just the other day, I was thinking, né? I was saying to myself, the opportunity that Umbongeni, Dumanzovu, Abobrahu gave us, you know, I won't trade it for anything. The reason I'm saying that, it's because, yo, we were so young, one, and I remember one time, Umbongeni set us down after rehearsing, because we rehearsed the Sarafina for nine months, eh? And to think that these days, you only rehearse a show, Ama theaters, they give you like four weeks, you know, to rehearse a show before the opening. And we rehearsed the Sarafina for nine months before we opened the market theater. And I was thinking that, you know, the way we are treated now as artists in South Africa, comparing to the way we were treated years back, your umesugo is so huge. We were given that respect. We we're earning imali, a right. And they just knew, you know, you'd go at backstage, let's say other times would go to Ugubuga like e boxing just to entertain before e boxing match starts. And you'd find good even at backstage, the treatment, the cars, when we are picked up and uh, the kind of cars, you would feel everything was just on top, like everything. And right now, Imali Tenji, I promise you, it tropile. Pekol Abantuman thank God you gave me that opportunity because I think I get that respect because of that. Like I was counting today that I've been in this industry for 35 years. And I'm like, oh my, I know I haven't achieved so much, that much, because I really want to fly high, you know, like really.
But I said to myself, you know, baby, the only way you can do that is to start your own thing. I remember one time I bumped into your airport. We spoke about that, that, you know what? You should stop complaining. I'm a production officer. So my bins are easy. Though. It hurts. We understand. But at the same time, it's their production. It's not mine. They can do whatever they want. They can sleep following morning and decide, which we don't need baby anymore. You understand? And they've got all the right. Until you start your own thing then you can say, okay, and make a difference. So it really hurts me to think Kuti Ikati, they've changed so much. Instead of the artists being recognized and, and getting the respect that they deserve, I don't know, everything just went, and this is only the beginning. And it, it hurts, especially when you know there's so much talent in South Africa, but and it seems like people are getting respect based on their bodies and their <laughs> and followers that you have. <laughs> even they ask you how many followers you have. What does that have to do? Mina, I was once in this production change where uh, I was called to say, uh, We are thinking of hiring so and so. What do you think? Mm. Okay, I was like, No, I don't think I have a say, but since you're asking me. If you think she's good, then it's okay. So they were like, but she's never acted before. But she's going to bring a lot of viewers because she's got so many followers. Sakala also shoot. Yay. It was a mess. <laughs> you know when you have to babysit somebody and Utolugut Umutu because of so many followers that she has, Agaboni, there is no need. They don't understand why Uzoza wena. Umamu baby, dad who connects his cards are command. Even though they're not saying it, but you could tell umuntu maumniga in note privately so because I'm that kind of a person. You know that only the director can give another actor a note. Me na na corner. I need to assess first and say, okay, I think we get along. I think now she's this kind of a person. She can listen to me. But I've seen, and the trauma that you have to go through as another actor, co actor. actor uh, like you're doing a scene with that person. And those directors, uh, those producers are not even there. They don't know. You know, when you even fail, you just fail to to connect with the person. Like, that is, oh God, oh, it's tiring. And they don't get it. It's tiring. It, it's, oh, yeah. It's hard times. It's hard times. But uh, one of my favorite songs here from is Sarafin. Put it throw back this day. So we're going to throw it back. It's I see throw. It's coming tomorrow. And eventually, mm -hmm. as we did reach it tomorrow, did we get a freedom? Nope. 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 We did not. Um, hey, man. You know, Tenji, you just touched on something. No, we didn't. We are still struggling about the same things. We are still suffering. It, it's still happening. Because I believe Guti Songe, we played this blind eye after freedom. I think we're overexcited because of Utatu Mandela being released from jail. You know, it was that moment where South Africa, Yonge, even in America, you know, you, we became one. We were so united at the time. And we forgot Ezni Izi in Uguti. This is what we were really fighting for. Fine, we we're promised. But I would say, Gogunye, we're just, we're promised a dream because most of the things that never happened. So, Umuntu if freedom, Uzenzela Yena, Ekanda Lake, Uzoiche Uguti, I am free, Ngenja Nayako, because we still have a long way to go. We still have a long way to go. So, It's tough, ne? It's tough. Ah, it's tough. Then, hey, it's tough. And it's tough. And I don't see it getting better now. I promise you. I don't see it getting better now. Like they say, Uguti, there is a secret, secret, there are secret, secret agents. Kona la bobazi, yobe government, kona abanye. You understand? Uibu uzi, ugan, Uguti. Can this thing, is it that deep? You understand? Now you look up to this one person who is running the country, and there's so much happening behind that, you know? It's really sad.